So, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware, a lot of colleges are shutting down because of the coronavirus. Georgia Tech is no exception and we have shut down for the remainder of the semester. First off, I just want to say I hope everyone is healthy and safe because right now that is the most important thing. Something that I realized though that pertains to you guys as well as myself is that for this channel there were a lot of videos I wanted to make this spring that I can't make unless I'm on campus. And this is a big deal for a lot of you guys because you're trying to decide if you want to go to Georgia Tech next fall and now you might not be able to tour because of the coronavirus. So from here in my bedroom in Pennsylvania, I'm going to do my best to give you guys a tour slash overview of campus using some footage that I've been sitting on for the past few months and talking you through the different parts of the campus. If you've been here for a while, you probably already know that I have some aerial videos from earlier on on this channel. I'll be incorporating some of this drone footage as well as some other drone footage that I've been shooting since then to help you guys get a better feel of what the campus is actually like. And of course, as always, I'll be hanging out down in the comments to answer your questions that you might have about campus. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is housing. Assuming you're going to live on campus, which most freshmen do, you really have two options. East Campus and West Campus. East Campus dorms are closer to fraternities, the stadium, and Tech Square. So if you want to be where things are happening, this is probably where you want to be. If you want to live in a quieter, more isolated area that's closer to the CRC, you'll probably want to live on West Campus. Freshman year, I lived on West Campus in a dorm called Montag, which is part of the FFM community. I highly recommend any of these three dorms. Finan is probably the most popular because it has the laundry and the printing built in, but you can't go wrong with any of these choices. Each floor has about 30 people with one or two PLs or peer leaders. A PL is just like an RA or a resident assistant, and really they're just there to help you get acclimated and make sure you get used to living at college. I lived in a two-person dorm. This is probably the configuration you can expect, but there are a few other options that might be available depending on the dorm you select. Genders are separated by floor, and the bathrooms are communal, both of which are to be expected. Overall, I was pretty happy with my experience living in Montag. The rooms are a good size. You are sharing it with someone else, but they're recently built and they're in good shape. Next, we'll move on to dining. There's three main dining halls on campus. Britain, North Avenue, and West Village. All of these, unfortunately, are on the extreme edges of campus. So if you live on West Campus, expect to have to walk 20 to 25 minutes just to get to Britain or North Avenue. Don't worry though, if you live on West Campus, you can get to West Village within five minutes. So don't worry too much about that. Britain and North Avenue are traditional all-you-can-eat dining halls. Britain typically isn't open on weekends and has a smaller selection of food, but generally people can agree that Britain has better food. Both of these dining halls have a bunch of different stations with a variety of different types of foods, but what food is available on which day is pretty hit or miss. If you're a picky eater, don't be surprised if there's days when you go to these dining halls and there's not really much you want to eat there. On the other side of campus, West Village is comprised of five different micro restaurants that you just order a dish from. On the one hand, you're getting less food, but on the other hand, generally the food is higher quality. During the week, the student center is normally open with different food options. However, with the renovations to the campus center next year, they haven't announced exactly what's going to happen with those food options. Generally though, there are several micro restaurants here that you can use meal swipes at, similar to what you would do at West Village. The freshman meal plan comprises mostly of meal swipes. You get four of these to use a day, as of this year at least. However, they did not roll over from day to day. You'll also get some dining dollars. You can purchase more of these if you'd like, and you can use these at any of the aforementioned places, as well as some other options such as Panera, Wing Zone, and Starbucks on West Campus, as well as other options throughout campus such as Chick-fil-A, Dunkin' Donuts, Panda Express, or Subway. The main benefits of using dining dollars is that they're tax exempt, and you also typically get a discount if you buy in bulk from Georgia Tech. All right, so now I wanna transition into talking about some of the main buildings on campus. This is probably going to be a little bit biased since I'm a computer science major. However, this is just my take on what's important on campus. The first one I wanna talk about is obviously the Kolk. So the Kolk is five stories tall with the top floor being partially comprised of an outdoor area. On the ground floor, you'll find two lecture halls as well as some classrooms. Then on floors two, three, four, and five, you'll find breakout rooms for your own meetings as well as labs and classrooms. Over the past few semesters, I've had a ton of classes at the Colk. This semester I didn't have any, but I still found myself going there almost every single day just because it's a nice place to study and get work done. The next building, or buildings, I should say I want to talk about is Barnes & Noble, which is attached to the Scheller College of Business. 
Now, if you watched my day in the life video, you'll know that I have some classes in the College of Business this semester. It's all the way out in Tech Square, so it's definitely a hike to get there, but it is a very nice building with several lecture halls inside. Like I mentioned, this is attached to Barnes & Nobles, which we have a two-story Barnes & Nobles right on the edge campus next to our Georgia Tech Hotel, and this essentially serves as our campus store. You can get merchandise here, you can get supplies for your classes here, you can even get computers here. Anything you need, you can get at Barnes & Nobles. The third building I want to talk about, which like I said, will probably be different next year, is the Student Center. The Student Center has a ton of food options, and this is where I eat lunch almost every single day. It also has an auditorium, a ballroom, a place for musicians, bowling alley, and an additional campus store called Birdell's. This is also where you'll get your packages and your mail, so this is definitely a central hub of the campus. The next building I want to talk about is the library. I'm not going to spend too long on this because they're currently doing renovations on it, so I don't know what it's going to look like when it's done, but from the one half that is done, it looks very nice. Now, there's pretty much no books in this library, so the name is a little bit deceiving, but it's primarily just a place for people to study and get work done and meet with others. If you do want a book, they'll bring it to campus for you, so you don't need to worry about that, but don't expect shelves upon shelves of books in this library. I'm going to refrain from going into some of the computer science buildings. If you have questions about those, make sure to leave them below. But the last building I want to talk about is the Campus Recreation Center, or the CRC. The CRC is actually an incredible facility. It's home to our gym, which is on the ground floor. It is also home to the Olympic pool. Not an Olympic sized pool, this is the Olympic pool from the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. And no, I have not gone in the pool, even though I've been here for three years. Should probably go in the pool before I graduate. On the top floor, you'll find basketball courts, badminton courts, an indoor soccer court, ping pong tables, and an indoor running track. Right outside of the CRC is Stamps Field. This is a huge turf field with a running track around the outside, and you'll see people using this just to play around with their friends, as well as being used for intramural sports. This is extremely close to where I've been living on West Campus, so if you're someone who's planning to go to the gym or use the CRC field a lot, I definitely recommend you consider living on West Campus. That's not to say that you can't go to the gym if you live on East Campus, but from personal experience, it's a lot easier to motivate yourself to go to the gym when it's three minutes away than when it's a 25 minute walk away. And the last thing I really wanna show you guys is the rest of the campus. I can't show you everything because I don't have footage of everything, but I just wanna use this as a chance to give you a taste of what the campus as a whole looks like. Tech Green is between the Colk, the Student Center, and Van Leer, and it's honestly just this huge expanse of grass that people like to use to play sports on, whether that's frisbee, spike ball, or just spending time with your dog. Bobby Dodd Stadium is where the football games take place. It's important to note that I think the first 2,500 students to sign up for home games get free tickets, so if you want to go to the games, you generally won't have to pay for it. However, if you want guaranteed admission to all the games, you can just sign up for a season pass. However, that will cost you money. This is the Burger Bowl. This is right behind the FFM community. You'll see people playing sports on this a lot of the year, and you might even see an ROTC training exercise depending on when you walk by. This is the whistle. It goes off at the end of every class, and it can be heard from pretty much anywhere on campus. So it serves as a useful reminder to teachers who run a little bit too long that they need to let their students out of class. This is Binary Bridge and Klaus. Klaus is a computer science building, and this used to be where we held our computer science career fairs back in my first two years of college. And here's some shots from the BioQuad. I generally don't need to go over here just because computer science majors don't generally go in this area. However, it's a gorgeous area, and depending on your major, you might spend a lot of time in this area. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna end it here. If you wanna see more aerial shots of campus, go ahead and click the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more content like this, Go ahead and subscribe and make sure you hit the bell. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.